First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of the ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace. Greetings. Assalamu alaikum. Islam. All of that good stuff. Yo, back once again with Dr. Aileen Bay, your host. And we getting ready to go into some good info. So stick with us. Before we go, let me call in my co-host, Brother L. Brother Fahim, you here? I tell you, what's your guy, Dr. Aileen? Peace, how are you doing tonight? Well, wonderful, wonderful. How the God doing? I'm doing well, huh? All right. Go All right, you are. <laughs> We'll get into some key information tonight dealing with the science of healing and the mastery of life. So let's get into the science of healing. All right. Um, number one, let, let, let me explain the primary source of energy um, so that everyone can follow along. Number one is prana, which is universal life force energy. is a form of the kundalini. When it's outside of the physical body, it's called Kutalini Prana. When it's inside the body, it's called Kundalini, which is the concentration of the universal life force in you. And it's a concentration, meaning that you are a microcosm of the macrocosm, meaning that you are the universe in miniature form. As above, so below, as within, so without. That's the supreme axiom from the teachings of the Hakka, which are the teachings of Tahuti, coming from ancient Tamare or Tamari. All right? Egypt, Emmet, Kamal. Um, that's what the people would actually refer to themselves as the Kamal or Kamal. Um, the Kushmors, um, that's what the Kushites um, was referred to. And the word more was spelled M O E R. And that developed into later on M O O R, M U U R, et cetera, et cetera. Because it was the letter M was that of the depiction of a owl. And the owl, of course, symbolizes 360 degrees um, because it's able to turn his head around 360 degrees as well as also the sound in which that is make is ooh, 
And the who sound um, happened to be one of the primary sounds of healing for the seven chakras. All right, as a matter of fact, the U sound in particular is that of the root chakra, which is your life force. That's the dwelling place of your life force, which is basically right above the crack of your behind. That's where the abode of the Kundalini is. So um, as it fell from the crown, third eye, down into the various step-down transformers called your chakra system, your melanin centers, it now dwells within most people at the base chakra. Your duty is to raise that energy up, and that deals with the message of life. Now, prana is important because it is all around you, all right? It permeates, all right? It penetrates. Prana is everything that is, was, and to be. You breathe in prana. And by breathing in prana, you're able to store it in three locations. If you want a long life, you store the energy in your lower dantian, which is the lower heaven, which is your belly button. Just like the umbilical cord attached you to your mother's when you was in her womb and you received your thoughts, your nurturement, everything through that umbilical cord. All right? Through your development over that nine months or 40 weeks or 10 going into the 10th month, 40 weeks or three trimester periods, the first three second three, third three, which is known as triple stage darkness. And then you come out into the light when the water breaks. All of that is metaphysical based on what actually happens to us in life. So this is where these stories come from within the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Hispanishads, the Parham Heru, Swit texts, known as also as the Hushia, known as the pyramid text, the coffin text, or the myrrh text, as it is pyramid text is called. Also from the Sumerian text, the Enuma Itch, the Epic of Gilgamesh, the tales of Etana, the tales of Ishtar, of Ninti, of Ninlil, the tale of Enki and Enlil, which is the same story as Cain and Abel within the Bible. Later on, it develops into another story of Jacob and Esau, and it develops into another story of Jesus and Judas. And this is all based on the brothers aspect and the betrayal, which is an ancient story. So this story is told over many times throughout many books, the Holy Quran, the five books of Buddha's sin, the um the Avestas, the Book of the Dead. Misnomer the Book of the Dead, which is the Paramount Rule text, as we spoke about. As well as also uh, many, many books throughout the various cultures. Now, they all are talking about the physiology, the physical body. Don't get caught up into the story. There's a message in which that they're trying to convey, dealing with allegory. And the word allegory means fictional characters that did not actually exist or physically live. But there's an underlying spiritual meaning that's being told behind the story in which that you're supposed to pick up. Caught up into the historical aspect or try to make it historical. So try to make it just astrological and keep you still looking outside of yourself. And what we do is make it deal with physiology, meaning that you have to look at your physical body as the template, or as the Bible say, states itself, that the body is the temple of God. You know, the kingdom of God is within you, Luke 17, 21. So all of this is talking about 
the supreme science of you being God or rather God inside of your physical body. And now, of course, you're being God body, as the five percenters say. And being God body means that there's a certain way in which that you have to master things. But that's the whole point of us being here is to spiritualize matter. That's the point of human existence. Each and every one of us have to learn how to spiritualize matter. That means to create a vibratory rate in which that is much quicker than just our dense body or the body that we have now because we fell, all right? We came as Ethereans or Ethereum beings or ether beings. And as we fell into the atmosphere, we took on the elements through each of the seven heavens as we came down. And on this last one, we took on the clay, as we would say, all right? The physical body has seven bodies. You have your physical body, your ethereal body, your astral body, your mental body, your cultural body, your spiritual body, your soul body. So as you came down through the seven heavens, as the Quran speaks of, which are the seven atmospheres, each one you took on a different layer until you became a dense flesh body, which is just like um, water turning to vapor and then coming back down in a form of snow in which that forms ice. So the condensation process is shown um, even with water. And remember, you're 75% water. You are an aquatic being. Your brain is... 90% water, your spine is 85% water, all right? Your dense bones is 25% water. So essentially, you are a water being, which hence is, i.e., um, with light reflecting from it, is a ethereum being, all right? And what caused that light or that reflection is prana. Prana happens to be the primary source of energy that is hidden or what is unknown by science in oxygen. If you get the Kabbalah or what is known as the encyclopedia of the Kabbalah, a Kabbalistic encyclopedia by Godwin, if you get that book, he will break down for you that Jesus Christ equals eight, eight, eight. That is nothing more than eight protons, eight electrons, eight neutrons, which is when you go to science, that is the eighth element on the particle chart, which is oxygen. So Jesus Christ symbolizes oxygen. That's one of the clues they left us. Not to say that this man came in a black body or a white body, or as we would say, as a moor or as an albion, or a pale one. We know that depiction is not even given in the scriptures. Even in Revelation, we know that he had hair like lamb's wool, feet of bronze burnt in the furnace. So obviously it gave our depiction because these stories were stories from our ancient tales. The Bible is nothing more than a summary of the Pehem Heru text, which is the Hushia, which is one of the oldest books. Um, the Putahu Tap, which actually is the oldest book, um, as well as also the Coffin text and the Pyramid text. All right? So what happens is that most of these stories come from there, as well as also a lot of those stories traveled on um, into Samaria. And we know how that story comes about, not that Nimrod actually existed, but it says that Nimrod was the grandson of Cush, all right, or the son of Cush, and Cush means black, you know, at least it's been translated as such, and of course, Cush is Ethiopia, and from out of Ethiopia, um, Nimrod, who was the son of Cush, Ethiopia, or Abyssinia, he traveled into uh, what now is known as Mesopotamia and formed his um, 
society. This is what it's saying. Um, of course, like I said, Nimrod did not physically exist, but the story is talking about how the coaches around 3000 BC to 4000 BC um, actually was parallel. How the so called Kushite Egyptian culture was parallel with the Sumerian Arcadian culture. And so, of course, you can read various books. Um, Zachariah Ascension's books deals with that information. All right. Of course, you have to watch that information and, you know, and be able to pick through it as far as the esoteric information. You never want to read any of these particular books with an exoteric mind dealing with just outer or surface information. The whole thing you want to read and learn how to apply these things back to you. That's the point of breathing. Breathing deals with centrifugal and centripetal force. When you sneeze, the sound noise that you make is the word Yashu. It's no coincidence that Jesus' name in Aramaic and Old Hebrew is Yeshua, which means, oh, he who saves or O Savior, or O Salvation. It is talking about your breath. Your breath is the salvation or the Savior because your breath is is the lower self with the higher self. Your breath is what activates the Kundalini at the base of the spine with various mutras or positions, movements, sounds, Mantras of healing. Kisses are haku. And when you do so, you're able to raise the kundalini, just like the phoenix from the ashes. And there's a rebirth. This is the born again that the Christian speaks about. This is the Holy Spirit or the fire shut up in my bones, as the Christians say. But when you master this energy, it does more than just have you foaming at the mouth, having to seat you on the ground. It does more than that. It gives you the ability in order to illuminate the mind, which are the caverns of the brain, which are the 12 pair cranial nerves, in which that give you access to higher sensory perception or ESP, extrasensory perception. Being able to take your touch, taste, smell, seeing, and hearing to the levels of clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, clairgestance, and psychemistry. This is what the breath does. This is why it's one of the most important things you can do. And we understand that just by simply looking at the fact that you can go without food 40 days or approximately a month or so. Now we know Jesus told you that and showed you that within the fasting, which that he did in the Bible against Satan on the mountain. You can go without water for about two weeks, but you can only go without air for about three to six minutes. That's how well you might be able to do based on your skills of being able to hold your breath. After three to six minutes, let's say six minutes, we have to call the ambulance because your soul will detach from your body. That silver cord or that ethereal cord will stretch. Go and read in Ecclesiastics where it speaks about the silver cord. And it's there in which that, in order to thicken the silver cord, you learn how to channel prana through it. You have to learn how to cycle prana through the top of your head and also through your perineum and then merge the energy into the heart for balance. Have what is called the prana tube in which that runs from the top of the head through the body, along the spine, down through the perineum within the woman is called the G spot, which is between the legs. In particular, the man 
is between his scrotum sac and his anus. It's like an indenture there. Within Taoism, it's, uh, it's called the Million Dollar Spot. You get Stephen Chang book called Dial Sexology, which means the way of sexology. So, breath, prana, and sun, those three in conjunction is what produce hell. The more you do it, the more it becomes apparent. We spoke about, I had a brother to call me not too long ago talking about I told some incorrect information, and I didn't give a um, title of the article in which that um, I went over um, dealing with sun gazing. Now, anybody who heard that particular show knows that I made mention of the names of the scientists in which that the individual could have looked up. I made mention of the article where I got it from, which was a CNN NASA um, article, and so the individual attempted to blast me on no delay. All right, without having the information, but the information of stargazing, which is sun gazing, goes back thousands and thousands of years at least 2,500 years to 3,000 years in India alone. But that was one of the things that we did. This is how we was called sun worshipers by the so-called Western scholars and historians. Or I should say so-called. Because we worship the sun. In other words, we practice exercises in the sun, learning how to absorb this prana energy, this chi, key energy, also referred to in Hawaii as mana, or kahuna mana. The Christians refer to it as the Holy Spirit. All right? So this particular energy is what gives you life. When it's condensed, you become a living form. That's what you are, a thought form, a living thought form, a concentration of seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side. So you want longevity, you learn how to bring prana down into your navel, into your belly. If you want love, compassion, mercy, then you learn how to bring the energy down into your heart, in particular at the back of the heart, so it can expand the front of the heart. If you want high IQ, intelligence, you bring it down into your third eye where the serpent or the Naga spirit raises up out of. And we know about the word Naga, how it's related to the word um, Nages, Neba Nages, or Nages, or Nagus Nages, which means the king of kings in Ethiopia. I was related to the two countries in Africa called Nigeria and Niger. And if you go to the Nile Valley Contribution of Civilization by Anthony T. Broder, he speaks the word Nagu. He speaks of the word Nagu and Naga. N-G-U-N-G-R. And how these particular words are actually related to Nigeria and Niger and how they was once before the 15th dynasty with the names used by the pharaohs and pharaohs, by the kings and queens of Egypt and Kush, which is Ethiopia, Abyssinia. So these names was used in Akibalan. Okay. These names was used in Africa. And we shouldn't have a problem 
with the word because it's talking about the Naga spirit, the Naga energy, which is the Kundalini itself. David Icke don't turn into something else. You know, uh, the reptilians, you know, so forth and so on. Yes, there are fourth dimensional entities on the lower astral plane of the first and second overtone. There are, and wish that love to attach themselves to those acceptable um, beings, mankind. In particular, the lighter you are, uh, the more um, demonic attachment can occur. Because the melanin is a shield, it helps block out radiation, hence attachments. But sometimes it penetrates even melanated beings, real dark melanated beings, whatever the case is. And that is known as schizophrenia. But that's because of the particular dendrites and synapses, um, dendrites and um, firing off, and the synapses are not firing off properly. So therefore, um, the particular brain, there's particular brain issues, and what you would want to use is the breath in order to correct that. You would do that by synchronizing both hemispheres of the brain through the alternating nostril breath technique called the um, biloma, anuma biloma. That's what it's called, the anuma biloma, which is alternating breath technique in which that you would breathe in, close your right nostril, breathe in for a count of four, hold both nostrils, close for a count of 16, then breathe out of your right nostril for a count of eight, and then reverse it. And you do 20 of those. And that synchronizes the brain in which that stops any nonsense such as schizophrenia, uh, bipolarism, you know, all the things that they claim that we are suffering from nowadays. All right? Headaches, migraines, now depression, etc. All right. So that's why the serpent is seen there at the third eye area, because it symbolizes the resurrection through the chakra system which are your seven churches in particular, and your six is angel, which is within Sanskrit is dealing with um, spirituality, psychic development, all right? And when they're in proper harmonial balance, you get the best of your gifts because it deals with the enlightenment of those 12 pair of cranial nerves as that light from those 12, which is the electrical magnetic energy, converges upon the pineal gland in order to activate it and resurrect the soul, which is within your brain, which is the seat of the soul. The pineal gland is the seat of the soul. The soul is called our soul. When it resurrects, it's Heru. It's talking about the soul principle within you. Many still look as Heru or saw as images on the wall of ancient Kemet. Oh, Heru has a hawk head, a bird head, or saw is green. And because you see these depictions, you believe that they actually exist in physical form. And actually they do exist in physical form, but it's your physical form, not an individual physical form outside of you unless you're talking about your brothers and sisters. Hence, when you see God, you see me. When I see you, I see God. But as far as just this one individual existing by those particular titles or names, no. It is reference to a people, as a matter of fact, melanated people were known as Heru people the Heru people, which you get the word Hiram Abyss in masonry. And Hiram Abyss was hit in the head by the three ruffians, Jabalon, within 
the Perhem Heru text, the battle between Osar and Set, Set has 72 conspirators. 72, um, 3 is divided by 72. So it's actually talking about the same principle there. But 72 conspirators conspired and they closed Osar which is Osiris, up into a coffin and sealed it shut and sailed him up the river. But Isis, which is all set, found him. All right. When Set got wind of it again, this time he cut up the Osiris' body into 14 pieces. And Osiris, Isis, once again, went looking for the various pieces into what is called the seven Ks, which is the same story as within the Sumerian text of Ishtar, which is Esther or Esther within your body or um, within your Bible, or the Eastern star, Ashti, which is talking about the star Sirius, right? So she finds 13 pieces, one missing, which is the phallus, Supposedly be eaten by a crocodile, catfish, or a crab. In the hence, scavenger of the sea, or scavenger of the waters. Yeah. All right. So, um, we're going to be getting more into the information in a second here. All right, Brother L, you got anything to add on? Yes, uh, I was uh, in the first uh, in the lecture. I was listening to what you were talking about uh, the chakras, uh, the crown chakra. You fell from the crown chakra down to the spine, uh, which right. is the beginning of the root chakras. Uh, right. That can also be related to the fall of man. Right, that is the fall of man, and the word man means mind, the mind, yes. the consciousness. Kundalini symbolizes consciousness, and it fell um, in those seven seats or seven melanin centers known as your chakra system. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. Yep, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. You can go yes, ahead, brother. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, you're talking about also... Uh, uh, when uh, uh, a set or a Isis found a saw, which is uh, uh, um, a Cyrus, uh, a saw, and uh, the, the, the set comes and box uh, the coffin up into 14 pieces, and she didn't find anything. Uh, she found all the parts except the phallus, which is the, which is the part of creation of life itself. And he has lost his ability to create life. And mm -hmm. Well, and that's the reason, and that's the reason why in Washington D.C., which was which was masonically designed by Benjamin Banneker, um, the obelisk sits there, except it's white. Mm -hmm. it symbolizes, in a sense, white power, because the word mm -hmm. obelisk is actually the word tekin or tekin, in which that the word tekin. Um, is that the Tekken, in which that is actually means black power, all right? Okay. But they turn it white. So um, it symbolizes white power in that regard, you know? Um, mm -hmm. White, uh, of course, symbolizes purity, too. But I doubt very likely, um, based on them saying that we didn't have a culture or a history because they stole it all, you know, um, based through their Masonic and... um you know, and Rosicrucian um, secret orders, you know, they attempt to hide this information from us, but it is out now because there's too much um, access to information. They can't do anything with the Internet per se. So this information is out and the information and knowledge. And, um, you know, and so this is becoming a society of knowers. And that's the age in which that we're in, is the age of Heru, which is the age of knowing, 
you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, 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 the, the thirteen, well, the thirteen pieces was left. Also, can relate to the number of new beginning. Uh, right. That's why uh, you see on the Confederate flag, you know, they have eleven mm-hmm. stars. Right. But they, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, the, no, I'm the Confederate states at that time during the what they call the Civil War. Well, actually, it was the War of the Rebellion, but they have right. eleven, uh, but they have eleven states. They only had 11 states, but they have 13 stars on the Confederate right. flag, which is the, uh, what they call the cross of St. Andrew, but actually it's the resurrection cross, meaning that the 13 cross has resurrected. The resurrected cross of who? Of Osiris, which yes. is all saw. So that's the reason why the Confederate flag has been worn. You know, recently, matter of fact, that, that brings up an issue in which that um, I seen recently on Facebook about people was bashing Kanye West for wearing the Confederate flag, but historically that is the symbol of Osiris. That is all yeah. star. And so, like you know, um, Andre three thousand did years ago, just like um, um, what's his name? Uh, oh man, what's the brother name? He's down there from Atlanta too. Um, Man, I can think of his name right now. I see him in my mind, but I can't think of his name now. Ludacris. Ludacris. Okay. <laughs> Had an old damn jacket made out of the um the um, Confederate flag. So Andre the Thousand War fell in different other um things of the Confederate the Confederate flag once again is ours. That is the Osirian um symbol. The Osirian symbol. So and it symbolizes our, in a sense, the resurrection. But that's only for those who understand that. Historically, of course, we know uh, what it means. The North beat the South. That became the symbol of the flag for the South. But what you don't know is that the North actually ran the South during that time period. And that's the reason why um, there was a rep, the, um That's why you had the Revolutionary War. Well, I should say, the, and the Civil War. The Civil War in particular is because the Moors ran the South. Mm-hmm. And the Moors had white slaves. In other words, Albion slaves. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they had to stop that. So their way in order to stop us from having them as slaves was by actually um, disenfranchising us, basically. And that's what the whole thing was about you know, after the so-called re- um, Reconstruction era, all right, mm-hmm. was to stop us. That's how they was able to institute Jim Crow. That's how, they was in, that's how they was able to do the civil rights movement and moved us away from human rights. All of those things was done purposely in order to, um, to give us these false labels in which that we're now rocking, which is Negro, Black, and Colored. You know, and if you say that you're not rocking it, oh, yes, you are, because it's on your birth certificate. <laughs> Big time. And that's the original bond, all right? So don't give me that bullshit that you're not rocking it. It's there. And if you haven't done anything in order to correct that, you know, because by allowing that you fall on the to it, it says three-fifths of a being three-fifth person, all right? So you have to be more than just a three-fifth person, all right? You want to be in whole um, and full life. You want to be a whole person, which is actually a whole being, which is an indigenous being, all right, aboriginal, all right? So these are the keys. They gave us loopholes in order to utilize, and we just have to use it, all right? And this is all part of the mastery of life that we're talking about. But first, it deals with the science of healing. And so the breath, prana, and like we said, the sun. And dealing with the sun, you know, we're going to, you know, deal with the fact of sun gazing, stargazing, as we call it, um, should be done in the morning times, um, right after the sun comes up and an hour before, um, you know, I believe probably like around, um, 8.30 now, 
you know, around here, you know, in wintertime. So going into winter. All right, so um, you want to be out there on the ground. You want to be out there on the ground with your shoes off, um, absorbing prana from the earth as well as also taking prana from above. Um, you want to be able to stare at the sun right after it comes up over the horizon um, for that one hour. Of course, you want to start out doing it for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, you know, and this is, you know, each day. So, like, for example, the first day you do um, 10 seconds, second day you do 20 seconds, third day you do 30, you know, and you want to build it up until you are able to do a half an hour, all right, to 45 minutes looking at the sun without, you know, um, you know, just looking and absorbing that prana. So we understand that there's a system to it. You're just not going to go out there and just start looking up at it. You know, there's a way that you have to do it. You know, so pay attention to that. Do your research, study. So these are the things you'll see also an image or depiction of Akhenaten and Ankh-Unten and Nefertiti and their children, their daughters, probably Tutankhamen, uh, King Tut, and you would see them um, with their arms raised up to the sun, called Aten, with the rays coming down with hands at the end, symbolic to the touch of the sun. And we know when we get touched by the sun, we get darker, we get more melanated. So it gives us strength, symbolically, to just like um, Samson, you know, um, just like the Incredible Hawk, you know, or any of these other, you know, um, fictional characters. All that is symbolic to us as the people. You get another book called Melanin, the Key to Freedom by Dr. Richard King. About all this information like that, as well as also the pioneer gland use for melatonin, which is produced 11 a.m. No, excuse me, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning, and serotonin, which is produced from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night. All right, so these are precursors to melanin itself, and then you also have DMT and penoline, which are the spiritual components of these substances in the brain, in which that the pineal gland acts as a communication gateway, stargate, to the spiritual world, the astral plane. And that's the reason why the Kundalini pineal gland awakening or saw resurrecting him from the dead because you have Kundalini Shakti, which is the Kundalini at the base of the spine, and then you have Kundalini Shiva, which is the pineal gland. And when the Kundalini raises up and hits the pineal gland, it illuminates the cavern called the Brahma Cave. This is also Jesus Christ in the stable or in the man manger in your Bible. Jesus in the manger or Jesus in the sepulchre. All that is symbolic to the soul being trapped inside of the pineal gland. The Gnostics said that the soul was incarcerated in the body or as we say, the soul is incarnated in the body. So incarceration and incarnation, there's a link as far as etymology in regard to the soul and the physical body. So the Gnostic seeing the physical body as a prison or a prism, which symbolizes being able to express those seven rays 
of light known as Roy G. Biff scientifically or the visible spectrum, which hence is the third dimension. So be able to go beyond the third dimension, you must tap into ultraviolet light, which ultraviolet light comes from the sun in which that deals with the healing of the melanin, hence the science of healing. Get Area Code 214, Area Code 214, you on the line. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can, loud and clear, bro. All right, I have one question. All right, I have one question for um, you. Yeah. Um, I've heard that melanated people are melanated people across the place have been with melanin so forth. Is this permanent? Is this like permanent? Like glossy like melanin? Like melanin? How can we generate How can we generate a melanin? Well, there's certain foods that you have to eat, of course. Um, green leafy vegetables, corolla, spirulina, alfalfa, wheatgrass, um, herbs in which that are green. Um, the reason why, because there's only one magnesium molecule difference between chlorophyll being green and melanin being brown or uh, reddish, which actually melanin actually is dark brown you know, damn near black, so, <laughs> as a molecule, you know, so, um, in order to repair, um, you simply um, take in more natural foods, you know, salads, uh, fruits, and that's the way that you basically um, have to do it, you know, um, alkaline water. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I have another question. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, as you said, you know, you reach Godhood, for a whole raise your Kundalini energy, energy up, right? Right. Right. Are you there? Right. Are you there? Yes, that's how you do it. Raise it up, but all also right, you right. have to learn. The, right, right. You have to learn how to do the macrocosmic and the macrocosmic orbit technique, uh, which is within Taoism, um, which deals with regeneration. You just don't want to raise it up. You want to be able to utilize it as a regeneration tool, and that's the serpent biting its tail called Aurora Boreas, um, which deals with um, you'll see the snake with um, with his mouth open biting its tail, and that symbolizes the macro um, and the micro cosmic orbit technique. And where could I get and that? where could I get that? You get that information from cultivating um, male sexual energy for Mantok Chia. All right, thank you. If I have any other questions, I'm going to let you know, bro. All right, now. We got area code 616. Area code 616, you on the line. Yo. Yo. You hear me? Hey. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Oh, yo. yo. Right, yo first yo. of all, hey, thank you, my brother. My brother. Thank you. Man, You're I'm doing it. Man, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And, uh... First of all, it is crazy because, um, you know, I hear this, that, that spirit calling me before I, and then y'all, y'all come back and validate it when I listen to the blog talk, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's how I know this is real. You know, I had a lot of cats come to me on stuff, and, you know, then it seemed like they were trying to juke me out of my paper just to try to get something straight, then I get knocked in the head and try to come back, and I'm like, dude, I'm trying to do this, but I ain't trying to... Be like mislead other people, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's that's one one thing I don't want to do. But um, however, my question is, uh, you saying the signs of the breath is, and, and that's just doing like those breathing techniques, right? Because right. I know you, you're talking about it's about rejuvenating the body, is, is, you know what I'm saying? And uh. My thing is I, I'm doing that, but I don't get to do that on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do the, uh, like, the we're doing it in the morning time because I used to be able to do that and watch the sun come up and, like, do that on a regular basis. Then I did begin to see a change, but I don't know if I was doing the correct breathing technique to do that. I was just doing right. breathing techniques. You know what I'm saying? Right, I understand. I'm and I right, let, let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you the um, breathing techniques in order to utilize um, doing the sun technique or the sun gazing, stargazing technique um, or method. Um, you want to do the 6363, the 7171, or the 80 retention breath, which deals with okay. um, what is called pranic breathing. 
and those particular three breaths are able to bring in more prana into your body, flood your aura and your chakra system with energy. And you can also okay. utilize, right, so, you know, you definitely want to do the 6363-7171 or the empty retention breath, which are called um, the pranic um, healing. Matter of fact, there's a book called Pranic Healing in which that you want to get. Another one called Advanced Pranic Healing. All right, and both of those books are by um, um, Choa, Master Choa. All right, Choa. Um, so you right C H O A Choa. Right, C H O A. Mhm. H O A. Okay. Yeah, because um, uh, and also, man, um. Like, uh, like, is there any, like, particular exercises that we should do? Or, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to get, like, I got this gut. I'm trying to lose it. I'm trying to detox. I'm trying to get off so I can get right. Because I, I see how important it is for as our image to be, so to speak, when we dealing with other people. And I see how they really, they once you know something, like, they really, really hate that. And they try anything they can to try to, like, down your image in front of other people, especially other black people when they know that you know. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Well, the thing for weight loss would be you can actually go to our website, www.dralimelbay.com. And go to our herbs, uh, um, healing and herbs section, our herbs and healing section, actually. Um, okay. And go there okay. and you can see uh, the weight loss blend in which that um, actually is bladder rack, kelp, iris sea moss, um, in which that helps with improving the activity of the thyroid gland, which is head of the metabolism. Hence, it gives yeah. with breaking down fats and tissues in the body. So that's see, what you want to do. And see, that's again because I got a thyroid issue. Now, how would right. you know that if the spirit ain't, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That's how I know, like this, this is this is real. You know what I'm saying? And I thank exactly. y'all. I'm glad. I'm glad I found y'all. I, I'm straight up, and y'all available. You know what I'm saying? For me to do my own research and study, so I can pass it down. You know. Exactly. That's what it's about. Each one, the village, the sure. child, but if, right? But if the village don't know shit, then how that child is going to be raised, and that's what's going on today. So we got Man. the correct. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, nah, because I, I know because I see it in my own house, and that's what that's what is driving. Because man, my girl, we are evenly yoked, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? But we tap into the spirit realm because it's like on TV. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, dude, you can't mess with that and not really know what you're doing. Like that's real. Like you gonna, I'm trying to defend shit from coming into the house. Like you know what I'm saying? And we got kids. Like and then they was talking about. Like I was looking at this thing with Kathy O'Brien, and they was talking about how they what they did to her as a kid. You know what I'm saying? And I live around in that area, not far from that area. So I'm like, well, damn, I really gotta be on guard. Like I need to know. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Straight up, because I'm telling you, my girl, she biracial, right? Mm-hmm. So, what? But when I dropped the seed in her, my baby came out looking back at his back at me. Right. You saw what I'm saying? And like her mother didn't like it. They didn't like that, and that's when I saw who these people really were. So we moved away from them. But I'm worried about is, has she been programmed in her psyche? You know what I'm saying? Because I hear her say certain shit, and I'm like, well, how do I how do I deal with that? I can't just whoop her ass. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because I got girls. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, how, how do I how do I battle that? How do I battle that? He's like, if I can well, leave. Like, if I can leave. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, I know something else is greater at risk than this. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like, oh, it's another nigga, no shit like that. Like, I see it beyond that. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, In the psyche. Hello? Right. I understand. Right. I understand. All right. Um, 
you willing to sit down and talk? I mean, I mean, what, what is, um, you know, how is that as far as um, being able to relate to each other? Um, um, I don't know. It's, don't know. it's like it's like a one way thing. Sometimes it's like it's mostly what she want to do, and I'm trying to get her to understand and like show her. But uh, maybe if I have it, like maybe a third party, I'm trying to study as much as I can, and and then and show and walk in that. So it's like forget what you're saying. This is what I'm doing until it has to like it, 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 she can't do nothing else. She can't say nothing right. else. Right. Well, the thing is, is that you want a compatibility chart, you know, or a love chart, as yeah. it's called. So you want to see how compatible, you know, that you know, and how much, you know, basically if it's going to work, if, if it's going to work, or if it's not going to work. So you need to, see, you, need to see, you know, get your birthday, your birthday, the place you was born at, what is the time? Yeah. So, yeah. Fact, Matter of fact, you can go to our website, um, www.drlemelbay. We have birth charts and, um, you know, love charts, you know, there, you know, compatibility charts. You can actually get um, readings um, from us as far as the compatibility chart, and you can see, you know, know, pros and cons of the relationship, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that because I'm trying to make sure it's like, okay, I'm trying to raise up this person, didn't get love from my mother, so basically she's been psychologically damaged from that, plus her father leaving the home, plus her father died, which was the closest person who was closer to her. You see what I'm saying? And so, you see what I'm saying? So I'm dealing with that. Then she's trying to say what well, she's she been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, so I'm like, well, I'm trying to understand that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to weed through all, all this. Okay, what's BS, what's not BS? You see what I'm saying? And what? how do I heal this family? Because I don't want to leave if it ain't the right thing to do. I'm trying to make sure, like, okay, there ain't no way around this. This is what it's going to be. It, this is my better option. You see what I'm saying? Because being a father is more important than, to me than anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I can't be a man, whatever, but my daughters, they make they gonna be making my baby, my grandbabies. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's that's you know what I'm saying. I'm looking at it like that. Exactly. So they they got. I'm looking at okay. Well, if you spend too much time with this person, you gonna act like this person, and that's not really who you are. You see what I'm saying? And you need to learn. And okay, this person eating all these cars. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I got to control this atmosphere. That's gonna benefit that's you in the future, future because these are things you need to know. And I don't want nobody don't constantly, want nobody constantly contradicting, that. contradicting that. I guess you, you know what I'm right. saying? Because that's not something they don't want. To do. Right, I understand. But you know, sometimes contradiction, um, or what is called mental friction, um, causes a person to go and do their own research. So sometimes that is necessary to, to um, have contradictions. So that okay. they can was true or not. So sometimes that's necessary. You know, um, you know, I know families in which that, you know, one side is Christian, the other side is Muslim. And so, yeah. you, know, um, you know, the child in between starts studying and, you know, learning from both and seeing what's really going on. And then eventually they end up being metaphysical because they see, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, just like what you're doing, you know, you found us. So, and you're getting this information, and you're going to go back and do your own research. Well, that's the same thing that's going to go on. YouTube is one of the beasts right now as far as that's concerned. You know what I'm saying? Okay. People can pull up okay. any and every scholar and historian out there on YouTube. You know? Um, yeah. I have dozens, dozens of videos on YouTube and didn't download, yeah. Yeah. And didn't download the majority of them. Other people did. Mm-hmm. Upload it on, however you want to call it. Also, too, God, what you can do is get your girl a set of tarot cards so she can learn how to do it herself. You know? Okay. Because you, you, you're not wrong. you got to be very careful with letting people do readings for you. You know, I learned yeah. that. Yeah. I'm envious and jealous and, you know, so you do have to be careful who's doing readings. You're not wrong with that, but 
get her some tarot cards. Let her learn how to do it. They got okay. beginner tarot cards. They got the um, got the um, reading on the bottom of the cards. You know, and then they got a little book to go with it. You know, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because like I said, she been tapping into the spirit and like want to go to gra- like graveyards and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, look, that's cool, like whatever, but let's study up on that first. Like just because they doing it on TV, like you know what I'm saying? All right, I got you. You absolutely correct, Doc. Um, you want to definitely yeah. study before you start going out there. Yeah. Yeah. I right, thank y'all so right, much. Thank y'all so much. Y'all, you know. You're welcome, brother. Peace out. So, no doubt. How? 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 All right. I'm going to go to the house. All right, we got area code 214. Area code 214, you on the line. We garbing that heck out and go, like, because we already hearing what the heck you going through. Damn, God. Yeah, peace. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I had to come back now. You know how they say okay. your soul is at the navel chakra, which is where your little bitty belly button's at, right? Right. For that to be active, do you have to feel like a warmth there, like the sun? Yes. That's normally what happens um, when you um, bring enough prana into that area. Um, it causes a warm sensation, and you'll feel that ex- um, sensation spread across your whole abdomen or abdominal area, which is called your abdominal brain. All right, because my question is, I was going to ask you about what the cold was, but right now I need to figure out how to get that to warm back up. It's cold as where I'm at. Right. Well, the soul is spiritual refinement. In other words, the soul is the spirit, but it's refined spirit. All right? In other words, it's the very core essence of your being. The concentration in which that brought you here, in which that fell into you, which is the Kundalini actually, the Kundalini, um, as that information, you know, as that um, energy fell to the root chakra, the navel chakra, the solar plexus, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, and the crown chakra, we understand that that was, like we said, was symbolic to the fall of man. The word man means he who thinks or the mind. If you go to Webster's Dictionary and look up the word man, man is not gender. Before it became a gender, it would first symbolize the mind itself. Hence, man, woman, are thought forms, human thought forms. All right, all right because I need right. to know any breathing technique or any information and all of that I can use to get my stomach back up. Because I've been everywhere. Even though I was born on cancer, I've been everywhere for some reason lately. I can't even remember who I was a day ago. That's how far I've been shifting off. So I need to have like a warm balance in my stomach. That's also been affecting how I'm feeling about the stuff because if I can't have that there, it's like I have no drive to do that. So I have to worry about what my soul, quote unquote, souls are doing first. So is there anything I can do to help with that as well? Help with that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, you want to do um, first the alternating nostril breath technique, and then you want to do what is called um, um, the belly breathing. And how you do the belly breathing is to breathe in, just simply breathe in, send the energy down to your belly, hold it there. If you need to, place your hands over your belly, over your abdominal, over your belly button. And then as you breathe out, you'll feel a sensation, a warm sensation in that area. Just keep doing it until it's like you stoking or firing. You lighting a match, you know, um, to ignite it. And that's what you're doing through the breath is actually igniting um, your navel chakra, which is um, the abode of your, of your actual immortality, your DNA, your blood supply. All of that is manufactured from that area with your abdominal or your stomach area. So the quote unquote so the quote unquote more health, more health, of eternal life is born in the quote unquote stomach or abdominal area, right? Right, exactly. That's why when you see the woman's womb, you see the uterus symbol which looks like the unk. All right, so if someone were to quote unquote die and they weren't at that stomach or abdominal or second navel chakra area. 
Well, the thing is, is go ahead. The thing is that the four lower chakras are called the four devils. So actually, those four bodies die um, eventually soon after the death of the physical body. But the three higher bodies, which is your throat chakra, your third eye, and your crown, which is called your ka, your um, your aku, your ka, and your ba. Those four, those three higher bodies symbolizes the immortal body in that regard. So when the energy um, from there is pulled up to the head area, um, that's actually when you gain the immortality afterlife, which is the spiritual immortality in which that you have the ability in order to incarnate in other lives, but yet with the knowledge in which that you gain from your previous incarnations. So the Merkaba is bringing the energy up to the top three or the top six, however you want to put it, right? Right, the top three, right, exactly. All right, thanks. The energy, that you, the energy that you absorb in your belly, you want to be able to move it down to the perineum and up the spine to the top of the head. Bathe in the brain with that energy so that you can activate and open and awaken the pineal, the pituitary gland, and the hypothalamus gland, and the thalamus gland, which are known as your eyes. That is your eye or the windows to the soul, which is talking about, per se, your spiritual enlightenment comes from those four particular glands in the brain. And the name of that breathing technique is? Um, it's simply um, empty retention which is just simply breathing in. You don't have to have a particular count. Just breathe in as deeply as you can. Um, hold the breath, with your hands over your belly for a few seconds, three to 12 seconds. And then as you exhale, you'll feel a warmer sensation in that area because that's where you're concentrating the energy at. So you would begin to feel warm. And you do it um, at least um, 20 times to um to get it mastered, you know, and then of course, you know, it would take less times to do it, but you um do it so many times. Um are you there? Yes, we're here. Oh, okay, because I heard you breaking up or something like that. Right. I was saying that if you um it's called empty retention. Just simply breathe in. There's no count. Hold your breath. If you want to for 3 to 12 seconds, it's, it's your, it depends on you. And then as you breathe out, you'll feel a warm sensation in the belly area because that's where you're concentrating your attention at and your focus of energy. So that's what I recommend, brother. All right. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate your time. I'm going to go ahead and get off, all right? All right. May, Thank um, you. You may get a lot out of Eileen's alternative healing classes. They're every Tuesday and every Sunday for three months. So you'll probably get a lot out of that. Also, too, to the brother whose wife was going to the graveyard, I know you're new into this consciousness information. You might want to look up Azariah and my Jade because they can give you a, a, a breakdown as to why your wife is um, led to go there. I think it's because her, her daddy died. And that, you know, she misses him. You know, she could be trying to communicate with his spirit. But it still needs to be done like you feel in, in proper um, knowledge. You can't just be just jumping out there because you're right. You have girls. You don't want their spirits to be taken. But Azariah and Maid, they right. they go to the graveyard see what they're knowledgeable about. Right. Sometimes it's called necromancy. Right. Yeah. Right. Communication yeah. with his uh, relatives. Uh, right. Right, or necromancy, right, exactly. Communicating with the spiritual um, dead. But it can oh, get yeah. perverted. Yeah. People, with dead, the spiritual entities. Yeah, but it yeah. can be perverted, too, where they being intimate with the dead. So you just got to be careful. Yeah, that's necrophilia. All right, so um, once again, we got anyone who want to ask a question, y'all been listening, 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. It was Paul. What's up?
what's up with y'all in the chat? Y'all not saying too much tonight. What's going on? All right, y'all need to call in, 626-414-3535. Right now, we got area code 773, area code 773. You on the line. Peace. How you doing, Dr. Allen Bay? This is Keisha. I'm calling from Chicago. How you doing? I just started listening to the show, so I kind of got bits and pieces about, you know, what you guys are talking about. But I had a question. <clears throat> um, I had, like, a, a connection to a person for a very long time, like almost 15 years, and it's been a on and off again relationship. And my question is just, what would you suggest that I do to, like, completely break the ties with that person? Do you want to? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, well, number one, being that it's been a relationship off and on for 15 years, y'all have ethereal, y'all have ethereal ties, which means that if he thinks about you, you'll feel him thinking about you and vice versa. So in order to um, clean the ties or break the ties, you have to do a um, spiritual bath cleansing. All right. Mm-hmm. So you need um, some absolute, some particular art in which that you put in your bath and you will soak for about 20 minutes um, in order to resolve the material threads in which that have your bind together over the last 15 years or so. The um the whole breakdown a little bit. You said um to do a bath. What did you say to put in it? I didn't hear you. Right. You need to do a spiritual right. cleansing, a bath. A yeah. spiritual bath that you have um, Epsom salt or sea salt or Himalayan salt, um, in which that you would use sea salt, as it's called also, um, in of iodine, in which that um, also helps with the cleansing of your auric fill, in which that helps dissolve the ethereal ties that y'all have, threads in which that y'all have. Mm-hmm. Okay, put it right there. Right. Thank you. And this, right, and, this, and this particular herbs and what that you need and that you can actually go to our website herbs mm-hmm. and health, in order to read up on the herbs. Mm-hmm. All right, and then um, if you need to, you can give us a call and we can put the bath together for you. Okay, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. I'll All right. check out the website. Thanks a lot. No doubt. All right, okay. peace. All right, y'all, that's 626-414-3535. Get your questions in. Come on. 626-414-3535. Brother L, you got anything you want to add to it? Yes. Uh, that's, well, what the, the sister was talking about, uh, like I said before, they were sending the, 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 the energies, their energies that were the ethereal energies out to each other. And it must be very strong. It has to mm-hmm. be. You know, to have them have a connection like that, mm-hmm. and uh, you, like I said, you told me you would uh, set up uh, uh, some uh, bath. Well, uh, the kind of techniques you can use to get rid of that, right. but it's, it's got to be with, really within her to really want to end the relationship. No doubt, only only she can free herself from that relationship. Right. Right. That's so, true. Uh, yes. Uh, I I was uh, also looking back at the uh, the uh, the number thirteen, and also the the uh, uh, Jesus and the twelve disciples. It, it, right. You, you can go back with that number, uh, with the, the twelve tribes of Judah. Uh, uh, the, the twelve zodiac signs, including the sun, you know, all with all of it stems from uh, the uh, <clears throat> even the twelve months of the year, right? And uh, it it all deals with uh, a reformation, as you can say, or a new beginning. Uh, I just think about the many Confederate soldiers that died for that Confederate flag. I mean, uh, uh, well, I heard over 600,000 uh, Europeans and, and Moors as well uh, died for that flag, but not didn't even know what that flag meant. 
Right. I mean, constantly waving it in the battle and didn't even know what those 13 stars actually meant. That's right. You know, it's some, kind of something to think about, you know. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And, of course, like you said, those 13 stars symbolizes the 13 pieces on which that was found by or set. You know, that's what it, um, it symbolizes stripes on the um, flag. As a matter of fact, the colors of red, white, and blue happen to be um, in the temple of um, Philadelphia, um, as it is called, um, on the Giza Plateau in Egypt, in which that in that temple it has the, um, the actual colors of red, white, and blue, which are the sure colors does. of which are the colors of all set. Sure does. You know, I saw that in the uh, in a DVD of uh, S. Y. Crazy had that shown in uh, the, the, the the red, red, white, and blue. Exactly. Right, as well as also the red, black, um, the red, black, and green, or the colors of our soul, which symbolize the resurrection. All right. Okay. You know, that's why these two um, colors are used. These two, well, two particular sets of colors. You know, it's because this information goes back to ancient Kemet, Tamaray. Mm-hmm. All right, hold on, brother. We got another call here. Area code 504. Code 504. You're on the line. Peace, peace. How you doing, brother? Peace. Peace, God. Trying to dig, trying to dig. Um, yeah, I just had a couple of, um, well, one question you did. You were speaking on um, 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 the eating chlorophyll, more chlorophyll to cleanse your body, cellular, you did. So one quick question, like, King, um, the, the, so, like, how do you feel that we on this paradigm shift you dig as far as um, your intake on eating flesh. Do you, like, do you think that's, like, cool? Or, like, do we, should, as, as spiritual beings, should we get off the flesh, you dig? Right. Well, number one, um, flesh is something in which that um, depends on your training, depends on what you're doing. In other words, if you're very active and you um having to be warlike as far as in battle, you know what I'm saying? Then eating flesh is permissible because it grounds you and it have to make you physical with those um with those emotions in which that you need in order to survive. Exactly. Those primal urges, those those instincts, those primal urges or instincts, you know, sometimes is necessary, especially in battle. Now other no, um, I give you a good example. You ever seen the Kung Fu movies? Yeah, you know, yeah. right. Um, before you know, they eat meat and everything. They go to the Shaolin Temple. You know, they shape and come. After the um, training, you know, um, sometimes they go back to eat meat. You'll see. Um, the masters, you know, eating chicken, you know, or something, you know. So, so, it's, so it all depends on your training, you know what I'm saying? Now, you know, you definitely want to get I said, of course, nowadays, meat is not good for you. It has a lot of steroids. It has a lot of antibiotics, parasites. Um, these things are in meat nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, to a large extent, very large extent, that nowadays seemingly can't handle the processing of meat in that regard. As a matter of fact, humans are not supposed to be, um, based on their teeth structure, they are supposed to be fruit eaters, right. vegetable eaters. You mm-hmm. know, in other words, vegetarian or vegan or fruitarian diet, not a carnivorous right. diet. You know, or omnivorous diet. You know, but originally we had no diet such as that because we lived on the primary source of energy, as I was stating earlier, which was us simply breathing and taking in the elements from the. Right. Hello. Right. We was taking in, right. We was taking in the prana energy from the primary source. You know, which is the air and the, the um, sun itself. So we actually, at one time, we was breathitarian. So the thing is, is that 
if we're omnivorous, carnivorous, vegetarian, vegan, fruitarian, liquidarian, All right, once again, omnivorous, carnivorous, vegetarian, vegan, liquidarian, or fruitarian, liquidarian, and then finally is the breathitarian. In other words, we're supposed to be moving up. All right, moving up through those seven to breathitarian. That is the ultimate goal for all of us to spiritualize the flesh. The more that we are able to take in prana, the more we raise the, vib the vibratory rate of the physical body, the frequency of the physical body. So that is the key to mastership in this regard. Okay? Thank you, Dig. It's definitely a confirmation because um, I've been on the spiritual journey for about, you know, three years, and uh, I, I became vegan, you dig, and... um. Um, man, I, I just been doing mad research and saying how, you know, if you put away the flesh, you dig, then you, you get a right. higher consciousness through, through the plants with the photosynthesis with the plants, you know what I mean? So, you know, I really just wanted to hear your take on it and, you know, personally and, you know, just learn a little more, you dig, but you, you must respect. Most respect, brother. Appreciate you. All right. Bless. Bless. All right. Oh, all right. No. All right, we get call in, y'all. Six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. The more y'all call in, the more this thing get exciting here, and the more knowledge we can drop. All right. So, um, brother L, you have any closing remarks? Yes. Uh, about the uh, about the uh, nutrition dealing with uh, being a vegetarian and uh, versus uh, meat. You were right about that, but a lot of the uh, Kung Fu movies, they did eat, eat mainly chicken. And uh, I guess back at the time, what they were uh, dealing with, uh, that's the book, your know, chicken was processed then. So, uh, but it does, uh, uh, in order to uh, be a successful warrior, or uh, uh, mixed martial arts fighter, or uh, martial artist, whatever, uh, meat does supply the nutrients to muscle mass. Unfortunately, when, when a lot of people get on strict, uh, like vegetarian diets and stuff like that, or vegan and stuff like that, they also, when they lose weight, they also lose a lot of muscle mass. And that's very unfortunate. And that comes from um, vitamin B intake. They have to take. They have to get more vitamin B, in particular vitamin B6 and vitamin B12 and B2. So um, that would help definitely with that. Right. Right. And uh, uh, like I said, it, uh, the meat gets certain protein. The meat potato. Uh, well, as you said, also uh, it, it's not really good for us. It's got so many uh, uh, chemicals and, and hormones, uh, any, any kind of every kind of uh, uh, chemical you can think of that's not right for us. So uh, it messes with our children and our young our young girls, especially. Uh, uh, does a lot of things to develop how them develop earlier, you know, than even before 13 years old. That's come from really come from eating a lot of those McDonald's and Burger Kings and all that. Sure. Yeah, and all those yeah. fast food restaurant fast foods. You know. Well, they get that pink glue that they um holding, you know, them burgers together, you know, the chicken nuggets and all that stuff. So yeah, you're absolutely correct, brother. And I mean you talking about the GMOs and different things. So yeah, I mean Nowadays, man, you just got to be careful of what's going on because they're even doing it for the fruits and vegetables. You, know, you got yeah, that's something. Yeah. Mm. You got Masonic Terminators on seeds. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was saying. That's why um, I can't pick one over the other. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately, like I said, is to get back to being a breathitarian, which they hell, they fucking up the damn with the chem. Yeah, they are. You know, the chemtrails. Right. You know? So, they're trying to control every facet of our life. Illuminati, elite, 
You know what I'm saying? Those in power who has money are trying to um, control every aspect of our life in order to make us dumb down so that we can be subservient to them. In other words, slaves. Exactly. You no, know, yes. so that we yes. that we won't break the confines of the establishment and develop our own establishment, a real new world order. Exactly. You know. Yeah, they they saying well, a lot of them they going a lot of, uh, a lot of them going to be vegans, a lot of them going to be vegetarians. Okay, we'll fix that too. And Monsanto was already getting talking to the uh, organic, you know, food products now, you know. And uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, the, like you said, your vegetables and your fruit now, uh, shooting a lot of stuff into the, uh, uh, the oranges, apples, uh, the, the, like seedless watermelons. You know, how are you going on those watermelons without the seeds? Uh, how are you going on those grapes without the seeds? The seedless grapes. So you know, those all those are genetically altered and modified foods. No doubt, no doubt about it, brother. Um, hold on, we got area code two one four. We're code two one four. You on the line? Hi, it's me again. How you doing? All right, fine. Hey. Fine, brother. Peace. Uh, well, since you guys are talking about food, I guess I can change my question. How do GMOs and other genetically modified edible products affect our quote unquote stolen genetic structure? Um, actually, what it does is. Um, interrupt the frequencies or the electromagnetism in which that is being conveyed between the food and the cells. See, when you eat something, it becomes part of your cellular structure through the cells um, generating it, you know, the prana in which that is inside the food, the hidden substance that is in the food, even though it comes from a secondary source, um, in particular, like, for example, fruit. Um, fruit is actually like a snapshot of the light of the sun in form. And when you eat it, you're taking in this light, all right, in the fruit, and the cells actually vibe off that frequency, and this is what regenerates the body or help with the regeneration of the body. But if the GMO, but if it's GMO, then it, inter, it's in, it impedes and interrupts that electromagnetism um, in which that is supposed to be between the food and you. And that is done purposely, and this is the reason why it's called a terminator, see, because they're terminating the electrical system. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And about that, um, and about your McDonald's and your hot dogs and everything else, from what I've heard, hot dogs are made of a pink slime with chloride, I believe fluoride, exactly. obviously, water, corn, soy, that's genetically modified, mixed together with a little bit more water, it's water, then they get these, they get these, quote unquote, exactly. bad meat. So when they cut up your little hamburgers, they cut up your burgers, cut up your beef, cut up whatever meat you have, even a rat, they have that scavenge and they put it all together into this pink slime. For your McDonald's fries, your McDonald's fries consist of potatoes, luckily. Followed by a whole cast of chemicals, which are obviously genetically modified. <laughs> and in these drinks, I see some. And the worst part is your bottled water. If your water is not pure, it has been found that there are a couple thousand chemicals in your water. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's bottled water. Yeah. Because and water go ahead. Go ahead. Which is from the city's um, main lines, the um, municipalities, um, you know, water, you know, um, storage or unit or whatever you refer to them as. And what happens is that, yes, um, I know, like in New York, they did a report on the water in New York, and which that was just a few years ago, in which they came up with over 4,000 4, chemicals in the water. Are you there? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, let's see here. Right. Brother L, did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Okay. Yeah, that's why a lot of yeah. people eat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people eat a lot of uh, uh, burgers and, and hot dogs and uh, what, whatever. Uh, they they be uh, about an hour later, they just uh, they talk about they hungry again because they're not really eating any real food. That's right. This, this yeah. is one of the worst parts, as you said about everybody has their own auto field. It's 
like a whole bunch of planets walking around with all the magnetic fields. And we use magnetic fields back and overlap or combine. They kind of have a little bit of both, right? And if you have like a collective, which is like a mass versus a small group, that mass or collective will eventually get to that little bitty group. So when I'm right. at school, I've actually, this is how bad it can get at school. If you There's a whole bunch of people walking across. They're all going through this one door. I open up one door, and I got called smart for that. People at school mm. use people at school. a lot more than their own minds. True. Like, I'm, I'm able to do double, like, 12 times 96, so on and so forth. You get called smart for that from what I've seen, so on and so forth. And also right. something else, as I've learned, some people get their stuff from the environment. Whenever I'm at school, it's like this bliss, like nothing is wrong. But the moment I come home, it kind of comes back now as a memory. That also plays yeah. a factor in that as well, which can actually mess some people up. And speaking of that, do you know some things that I can do and other people can do to kind of get that off? Because right now I feel like that there's nothing wrong with the world at all. Like it's kind of perfect, and I don't like that feeling. Right. Um, it, it, it Really, if you focus on yourself as far as raising yourself up and becoming more enlightened yourself, mm-hmm. there is nothing wrong with the world because the world will begin to reflect what is inside of you. That's what the ancients knew. So the more that you master yourself, the more the world has to reflect. The more you bring people in your life in which that has the same point of view. That's the law of attraction. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, right. right. So simply changing your mind state, you know, like I said, through the breathing, like I said, the 6363 is one of the most powerful techniques. It's called pranic breathing in which that you can magnetize your aura in order to attract the people in your life, the jobs that you want, finances, etc., whatever you need, as well as also spiritual enlightenment, which is the most important out of the one in which I made mention of. So you want to master that 6363 because it magnetizes the auric field. It's real good for that. <laughs> I can tell that worked because I got stopped by the police and I walked away with nothing at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, one more thing, um, this, do you know how people like Bobby Hemet and everybody like Ms. Yaffa say the spirit told you to do something, right? Right. <clears throat> what do they mean by that? What, what is the quote-unquote spirit? Well, the spirit is the higher self. In other words, um, the higher self is actually the real you, which is operating in the physical body. Yeah. You know, in this particular incarnation. And there's times when your mind, your via your brain is able to tap into your higher self, which is your God. That is actually your Lord, your new Savior, is your, is your higher self. Mm-hmm. The crown chakra. Right. Well, like you said earlier, if you, if you heard us earlier, you said when the crown chakra, stay up from the crown chakra, uh, right. down to the, spot, to, to the root chakra, you have the fall of man, you know, right. and raising from the, uh, from the bottom, from the root chakra, all back to the crown chakra, it's a race into our higher selves, our spiritual selves. Right. But thank you, brother. I appreciate you for coming on, and I'm definitely asking those questions. I'm going to go to another caller here because for some reason they all of a sudden they're um, lining up and it's near the end. <laughs> Hold on. Let me go to area code 574. Area code 574, you on the line. Peace, peace. How you doing, everybody? Yeah, peace, God. How you doing? Doing well. Uh, I had a couple of questions about the Kundalini. Yes. All right. Um, once you're able to raise Kundalini, what should be one of your main objectives? Is to be able to circulate the energy back down the front channel. You have two channels. Actually, it's only one to circle by in the tail, but they call it two channels. The one going from the up the spine to the top of the head is called the governing vessel, and the one down to the um, from that head is down the front of the body, back to the cranium is called the conceptional vessel. Now, when these two are in sync, and how you sync them is by closing off the offices, which is pulling up your anal muscles and the perineum, as well as also taking your tongue and putting it behind your top teeth, mm-hmm. right there on the pad. And by closing that off, you lose no energy. In other words, you keep the energy inside of you, so as you practice in the techniques, you're circulating the energy in a microcosmic orbit in a circle, and that is rejuvenating your body. 
so that is the purpose is actually in order to gain immortality. You know what I'm saying? Which not just physical immortality, spiritual immortality. In other words, if you pass form, you can incarnate again with the memories from your last incarnation. So hence, you are, in other words, it's perpetual. You no longer will just die with a veil because ancient Egypt will show you on the walls that um, you had the scales of life in which that was called um, Libra or the scales of Mayat. And on it was, on one was the heart, and on the other one was a feather. The heart symbolized the desires. And if your desires, which is, a, which is whatever you was able to detach, in other words, the more detached you became, the lighter your heart was, and therefore you no longer have to incarnate if your heart was lighter than a feather. However, if your heart was heavier than a feather, then you had an animal by the name of Animus. All right? Animus. And what Animus would do is eat the heart, which means now you would have to incarnate without knowledge from your past incarnation. So, therefore, you come back thinking that you're just a fleshly being, that this is just about me, myself, and I. And you no longer have any um, way of tapping into the, well, you do have a way in order to tap into the Akashic Records, but you no longer remember how to do so. But for those who want to, your um, personal Akashic Records is located at the Medulla Oblongata at the back of the head. And by simply tapping on that area, you score that area in which that creates photographic memory as well as also um, give you glimpses of your past lives. All right, so um, that that is the science on the reason why you want to master the Kundalini. And plus, when you see the Kundalini, you see the Caduceus on the hospital, um, on all of the hospitals in this country. Yeah. That symbol, the Caduceus or the Uraeus, which symbolizes the activation of the Shoshuna, the Eda, and the Pingala, which are known as the Snakes of Christ or the Nadis. These three name, main nadis, when the kundalini comes up through them, it creates the hidden effect in which that symbolizes the reason why they use that medical symbol in all the hospitals. It was also a symbol of Nagal within Samaria as well as also of Imhotep in the third dynasty under, um, who was the prime visor under Dozer, who was the pharaoh of Nagu. All right, and um, when you raise raising Kudalini, what is the substance that is going up to the Nile gland? Is it melanin? Um, it's a mercurish, it's a whitish mercurish color. That's why it's called quicksilver. That's why um, you will find um, within the Roman and the Greek tales, you have mercury and you have quicksilver. Quicksilver within the Roman and mercury within the Greek, in which that symbolizes the the movement of the Kundalini. So whenever you read about Mercury or quicksilver in in um history within the Roman or Greek history that's what it's symbolic to that is nothing more than um the caduceus itself which is actually um uh, called Saturn all right in which that creates immortality which is the symbol of the serpent which hints the naga okay. and uh how do you feel about marijuana? Does that suppress your melanin or have any effects on your kundalini smoking form? Well, it has a lot of THC, which um, binds it with the melanin because the melanin itself is a lot of carbon. So um, when you smoke, that's what produces what is called um, hallucinations or, you know, or being able to activate right the euphoria feeling or being able to open more activations of the brain. But, the thing is, is that the byproduct of that is the smoke itself, in which that can do damage to the lungs over a long period of time. Um, even though um, weed has not, you know, harmed anyone as far as, like, cigarettes in that regard. I mean, you know, um, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of deaths each year from cigarette usage, you know. But, you know, very rarely do we hear of anyone dying from you know, from weed or herbs, you know what I'm saying, in that regard, or trees, whatever you want to call it. So, um, obviously, it's safer than cigarettes. That's what we can say. Um, 
But there's something in which that is called the Ibu, um, the Ibuga Tabernathy plant, in which that is 70 times more potent than in which that creates or give you out of body experience or astral travels or projection. Can you say that name again for me? Tabernathy Ibuga. T A B E R N A T H Y Ibuga. I B O G A Ibuga. So the Tabernathy Ibuga plant is 70 times more potent than marijuana, in which that it does produce um, out of body experience or astral projection or travel. All right. Um, there's other plants in which that it can be utilized. Um, some speak of the DMT usage or the penaline activation in the pineal gland, um, utilizing mushrooms. In particular, yeah. mushrooms in which that is grown with dung, um, in which that is red and white, in which that can be utilized. All right. Um, the Native Americans use peyote, you know what I'm saying? So um, Africans use hash, you know. So it, it's been used, you know what I'm saying, plants have been used in many forms in order to activate the mind and create enlightenment. It's just the way in which that you do it. You're going to do it as a tea is liquid, or you're going to smoke it, or you're going to eat it. You know, the choice is yours based on which that you're trying to do. Um, the priority was used by Native Americans in order to um, be smoked in the peace pipe, um, in order to um, create um, or give them that same type of feeling as the weed does, you know, um, especially when they're using it in a ceremonial practice such as um, the Plain Indians, when they was doing a lot of their um, houses, you know, what is called, a, um, um, not their teepees, but when they was doing, <laughs> when, they, when they was doing um, a lot of um, um, spiritual work and they were sweat lodges, exactly. Right, so... Um, that's that's what they was using it for, ceremonial purposes. If a nigga just wake up smoking it and then going to bed smoking it day in and day out, that ain't doing shit for them. You know what I'm saying? It has to be in a spiritual practice. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to smoke it, do it um, in a spiritual practice so that um, you already have the mind state that you're doing it in order to help and to heal, not to hurt, you know, and cause despair. Okay. All right, I Appreciate uh, you. I appreciate y'all. Thanks a lot. All right, now. All right, we got block a pit. I don't know who that is, but block a pit. You are on? All right, peace, peace, peace. I lean this G G Coleman in the in the chat room. Definitely, I was just I was just um, logged in, man. Definitely, I hit the one when I came in, but pretty much I was just right. you know just sending a shout out. Definitely, just sending you a shout out, and pretty much I was just gonna ask about uh just the importance. Of the breathing techniques and everything in in releasing right. the toxins in the body, but pretty much you just right. summed that up with uh, explaining the rising of the Kundalini. So pretty much, I, I, I definitely you know got a better understanding of it, and uh, pretty much just to send you a shout out, definitely. Appreciate that, Ock. And what well, is a technique in order to um, alleviate toxins? What you would do is visualize a light, the sun right at your third eye area. And what you're doing is drawing the light into your third eye. You want to send the golden light down the base of your spine, to the base of your spine. And then as you ex, this is on the inhale, and you hold it as you're visualizing it coming down. As you exhale, you'll open your mouth and... Okay, okay. And all of that's coming off the lungs. And that's coming out the lungs. So, the, so what you're doing is telling your body to send the debris, the um, toxins, the poisons, you know, okay. um, the free radical, you know, um, you know, sending all of that out of your body, and your body will respond because your mind controls your body. Definitely. Okay. Your mind. Your mind over matter. Yes, sir. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, definitely, and I do have been practicing the uh, breathing techniques for a minute, man. I always check you out when I can't even check you live. I'm definitely in the archives. Shout out right, to you, man. Appreciate, Pre appreciate it always, bro. No doubt. Appreciate you, brother, for listening. Yes, indeed. All right, we got area code 540, area code 540, you on the line. 
you know, get back up and rolling with that. So we oh, ain't ending it, but we we had to take a break because I'm trying to write books. You know, right now I got to, I have books that I'm writing on, and so, you know, it's kind of difficult. So I, I'm trying to develop, you know, as much time as possible, you know, to those books where I can get them out. That's very understandable, God. I can understand that. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, so, uh, like I say, we keep on putting this positive energy here every Wednesday night then. And I will be on the air, if I law willing. And all right. I can see peace and love to you and the goddess and all brothers and the goddess and brother gods in the chat room as well. So right. all my energy out to y'all. Peace and love to you all. Peace and love oh, to all of y'all, too. And we out, y'all. First world order radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.